Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Roussel, and in today's Ask Dr. Mike YouTube Q&A, we're going to talk about metabolic adaptation to ketogenic diets. So today's question comes from another Facebook fan, and in this question, the fan writes, what about metabolic adaptations to ketogenic diets? Uh, Dr. Lane Norton talks about keeping calories up while dieting. Does this minimize damage slash adaptation even if your carbs are very low? So um, what this question is kind of centering on is this concept about metabolic damage or adaptation. Uh, and Dr. Norton has a great series, about three or four videos long, I think all about um, this concept of metabolic adaptation or metabolic damage. Um, so I suggest you go watch those. They're rather lengthy, but they're worth it. There's a lot of great information there. But the gist of it is, is that your body becomes very efficient at burning calories when you drive your calories lower and lower and do more and more steady state aerobic cardio. Now we're not talking about one or two 45 minute cardio sessions a week talking more about one or two hours of cardio per day. So this is a high amount of cardio and very, very low calories. And essentially what you're doing is kind of metabolically shocking your system and your body responds by becoming a lot more efficient. Now these mechanisms of efficiency have, are starting to get fleshed out in, you know, in the scientific literature. But that's basically kind of what we're talking about. Right now I feel like it's more anecdotal than kind of the mountains of scientific evidence. But within the scientific literature, the basis of these adaptations is definitely present and discovered. So how does this relate specifically to ketogenic diets? And, you know, because your carbs are really low, can you still keep your calories high so you don't get these metabolic adaptations? And the answer is yes. So what about ketosis? So this is a really important key to remember. Ketosis is not weight loss. Instead, Ketosis is actually a metabolic state when fat is being burned as your primary fuel source. And then ketones are being produced. Now ketones are a byproduct of fat metabolism. When fat is getting oxidized at a very high rate, there's an overflow pathway which results in ketone production. And then you can measure ketone formation in either your urine or in your blood. Your blood actually being more accurate. Um, oftentimes, one of the most popular ways of measuring dietary ketosis is uh, through measuring uh, ketones in your urine because that's one of the where it overflows. But urinary ketosis and blood ketone levels are not always correlated. Um, one other side note about ketosis, dietary induced ketosis through a very low carbohydrate diet is very, very different than uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a dangerous metabolic state. Now, oftentimes, when you hear the uninformed talking about very low carbohydrate and ketogenic diets, they'll talk about how you get into ketoacidosis and it's very dangerous. It's not very dangerous. Comparing uh, dietary-induced ketosis from a low-carbohydrate diet to diabetic uh, ketoacidosis is like comparing junior high basketball to professional basketball. They're on very far ends of the spectrum. They're both basketball, but are very far apart. So, how can you be on, how can you take a ketogenic diet, which is a great, effective, safe dietary protocol, and minimize the metabolic damage and adaptation if you're trying to use it to lose weight? So here are four things, five things, that you can do to do this. The first thing is when you first get onto a ketogenic diet, increase the fat in your diet, but don't cut calories, okay? And this really gets back at the question is, can you keep calories up, even though, and carbs are very low, to minimize this adaptation. So when you initially get on a ketogenic diet, you need to get your body to adapt to this new way of eating. You need to move away from carbohydrates being your primary fuel source to fat being your primary fuel source, okay? Now I always tell clients, that's a big switch, right? Which causes, which needs to have a lot of DNA and enzymatic machinery needs to get turned around, upregulated, and other things need to get downregulated. So we don't wanna take that and couple it with calorie restriction, which is another kind of stressful metabolic state at the same time, right? Give your body a break. 
First, just worry about getting into ketosis, then worry about lowering calories or increasing exercise to burn and lose fat. So increase your fat significantly because you need to get up to about 60% calories from fat. But don't worry about cutting calories. So eat till you're full and satiated. If you're hungry, eat, you know, eat throughout the day. The second thing that I like to do is to deplete glycogen quickly. So research shows that, you know, with one bout of exercise, you can deplete, you know, one, it's one intense bout of exercise, but that you can deplete muscle glycogen and that causes the DNA and the mRNA in your body to start producing uh, different compounds and enzymes needed to fuel you in a carb depleted state. So there are some carbohydrate uh, and glycogen depletion protocols, which basically involve, you know, high intensity aerobic type exercise that's held at a high enough intensity that you're not going to be accessing your fat stores, also done in sort of a higher intensity aerobic interval format. And I'll link to uh, some protocols below this video so you can see kind of what that's all about. They're very intense, but they're also very effective at emptying out your muscle glycogen stores very fast. Because if you don't have that muscle glycogen, your body is going to need to turn to other fuel sources more quickly. The other fuel sources being fat. So the next thing is to keep protein levels in check. So you're going to increase your fat, right, a lot, but I don't want you to then also increase your protein a lot because when your body's going to go around and start searching for energy when it doesn't have carbohydrates, it can break down protein and use that as glucose and fuel, but we don't want that. We want it to use fat as fuel. So keep your protein levels moderate but not excessive. That's a, you know, a mistake that a lot of people make when they first go into um try to go into a ketogenic diet, and that can impair getting into ketosis. So four is to de decrease calories as much as needed, but keep your fat high. So as you start this adaptation process, right, you can start then once you ramp up your exercise and start feeling good, then you can lower your calories slowly, just as if you were on any other normal sort of diet. But the key is to get your calories up get your body to sort of stabilize, you're probably going to start losing fat naturally even at this high calorie, a higher calorie intake because of the mechanisms of ketogenic diets. But then you want to slowly decrease calories, but you can still increase your activity and keep your activity levels really high. When I was training to deadlift 500 pounds over the course of that, say, 12 or 13 weeks, I was on a ketogenic diet. So I was able to perform, you know, with strength training at a very high level without hardly any carbohydrates, 10 to 20 grams of carbohydrates per day on average. It's because once your body adapts, it becomes really good at what it's adapted to. The fifth thing is to just give it time. Okay, This adaptation to a ketogenic diet takes time. And if you jump the gun, you're actually probably going to maximize the metabolic damage in adaptation. Because if you jump the gun and start cutting calories too fast, right? because you're eager to start eliciting weight loss, that's going to start screwing with things. So give your body time to adapt to ketosis. Give your body time to adapt to using fat as its primary fuel source. Think of how long you've been using carbohydrates as your primary fuel source, right? Your whole life. So a lot of people think, oh, well, it's going to take two weeks or it's going to, it's going to take two days or it's going to take two weeks, right? On average, maybe it takes two weeks, but it takes some people a lot longer, right? There's a lot of metabolic momentum that needs to get shifted and changed around to start using fat as your primary fuel source. So give it some time and decrease your calories conservatively. Because initially, once you get going, you're not really going to be able to exercise at the high intensity that you're used to. But as you start to feel your workouts and your intensity is increasing, right, then you're going to know that you're starting the adaptation. Now, if you want to get really analytical with measuring your keto adaptation, the best way to do it is looking at your um, blood levels of ketones. And you can get, it looks just like a glucometer, but it measures uh, blood ketone levels. Now, the keto sticks are like gold. They're not cheap. So you can get away without it, but if you really want to take it that extra level to, uh, to, to troubleshoot and maximize uh, ketosis, then you can get one of these things, but the sticks are, you know, two bucks, so you don't want to waste them. But So that's how you go about um, minimizing metabolic damage while maximizing keto adaptation and still losing weight. Okay? So I hope that answers your question. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, post comments below, ask questions, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, visit my blog at microcell.com. Thanks a lot.